Thank you, Lord. We're going to go to Colossians this morning. Colossians chapter 3, amen. Philippians, Colossians, you can find it. You know, Genesis, Exodus, Philippians, Colossians. There's a few in between there. Y'all find them, amen. Got it. Praise the Lord. Colossians chapter 3, and we're going to start in verse 12, amen. Amen. All right. Hallelujah. It says, therefore. All right. Now we go over this. What is therefore, therefore? It's to get your attention, right? Therefore means we need to figure out what it's there for. All right. Then it says, therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved. Mm, come on now. Who's he talking to this morning? Man, he's talking to me this morning. Amen. Is he talking to you this morning? Do you realize that this morning you're holy and beloved? Amen. That you are the elect of God. Amen. You know, it really doesn't matter what anybody else said about you in your past. It doesn't matter what they think about you at work. Come on now. What matters is my Bible says that I am the elect. Come on now. Holy and beloved. You know what it's like to be loved, amen? You know, I was sharing this morning, part of the love that goes around is that magic clothes hamper that I have in my house, amen? I put dirty clothes in, clean clothes come out, amen? Come on now, that's because my wife loves me, amen? And she knows I'd wear them dirty, it don't matter to me, and she'd be embarrassed, amen? I get up in the mornings to go to work some mornings and I'll, you know, I put on my boots and my blue jeans and my t-shirt and my wife will look at me once in a while and she'll say to me, you know, that does not match. <laughs> you know, I don't care. <laughs> So, and then she'll say, depending on where, well, you know, that's a reflection on me. That's why she lays my clothes out on Sunday morning. Come on now. Because if, if she didn't, I'd, I'd show up in shorts, flip flops, and a tank top. Amen. But see, listen, we are holy and loved. Amen. Amen. You can find peace and comfort knowing that, listen, no matter what you're facing or going through, God loves you. Yes. He's told yes. us that over and over in his word. Amen. Amen. Find strength and comfort. All right. It says in 12, therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved. Now, listen, here we're getting to the therefore part. Are you with me? It says to put on tender mercies, kindness, humility, meekness, long suffering, bearing with one another and forgiving one another. All right. It's not near as exciting as it was a minute ago, is it? No, no, it's not. I don't know about you, but once in a while I have a hard time not getting my permanent marker and just marking out a few of the things that I don't care for. Amen. You know, I don't know about you, but I've been raised in church long enough, and, and, uh, and there are some people, and I'm not going to mention any names, but, you know, you wonder what parts of the Bible that they don't read and say that they do read, by the way, and I kind of figured it out. They just cross out the parts they don't agree with. Amen? So what do you think? Think we can give that a shot? We'll just start crossing out the parts that we don't agree with. You know, my Bible says that we're not supposed to add or take away, though. Isn't that what your Bible says? Isn't, isn't that what you, you know, my Bible says Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So even if it's something that we really don't care for, in all honesty, what do we need to do? And start doing what the Word says. If you're wondering what it's there for, let's get into it. The first one it says is put on tender mercies. Y'all know what tender mercies are? They're what most of us don't possess, amen? Tender mercies, loving and forgiving, and we'll get to the 
just a minute. But you know, when we read through these things, what God holds us accountable to, you know, what's the love chapter in the Bible? Come on now, 1 Corinthians 13, right? That's the love chapter. Love chapter. Now, let me ask you, how many of you ever read that throughout the year and just kind of see where you are? Well, one of you, praise the Lord, we're growing. Church is getting better, amen? <clears throat> you ever read that and figure out where you are? Well, this is just kind of backing that up, amen? So it says to put on the tender mercies. That's kind of self-explanatory. We all know what tender mercies are. You, you know, that's not normally what most of us are, amen? You know, in, in, in with me and raising my kids, when my kids would come to me, when they got hurt, I was not the one with tender mercies. I was the one that looked at them if they weren't bleeding profusely, if the bone wasn't sticking out. I'm all like, go rub some dirt on it. You'll be okay. <laughs> right? Come on now. And I can remember my son when he was about four years old. He had gotten hurt. And he came and was, was, was whining and crying to me a little bit. And, uh, and I looked at him and I said, buddy, listen, it's not that bad. Okay, come on now. You're going to be okay. Yeah. And you know how they are at four years old. Everything is traumatic. Amen. And he's all, you know, and they get that <laughs> thing going on like that, you know. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Most of them stop when they're four. But there's some of you here who haven't. I'm not going to mention any names. But yeah, it's about time to stop that. Amen. But he's four and he's doing that. <laughs> and he looks right at me and he says, Dad, I need you to be more like mom. <laughs> Because mom would say, and his voice changes and everything. It's okay, honey. You're going to be fine. Come here. Let me just hold you. I'll just kiss it. Make it better. I'm like, that ain't happening. Go see your mom. Amen. But now listen. Now, come on. Spiritually, we could all use a little bit more Tender mercies, amen. Yes. Be a, yes. You know, we're all, uh, we tend to be, if we're not really careful, pretty judgmental and pretty hard once in a while. But listen, let me tell you, but there but the grace of God go I and given the right set of circumstance and challenges, you might be surprised at what you might do or not do that you think that you shouldn't or you're better than somebody else because they did. So how about we say Jesus loves you, Jesus forgives you. I might not agree, but I'm not going to judge you. I'm going to pray for you and wrap my arms around you and say there's a better way. There's a better way. Let's get back into the fold. Let's get back into the good graces of Jesus because we got a good, good father. A good father. He's a good daddy that loves you this morning. So we get a little bit more of them tender mercies. And then some more of that humility. Amen. You know, there's a good humble and there's a false sense of humility and some of you need to understand the difference and know and realize that trust me, you ain't all that in a bag of chips. Amen. And no matter what anybody else says, yes, you are not perfect. You got problems and challenges and yours are just as bad as somebody else's. So how about instead of looking around and trying to figure out who you're better than, why don't you look out and figure out who you're not better than, amen? Because we're not better than Jesus, amen? And he loves all of us the same and wants all of us. Are you with me this morning? Yeah, there's a whole lot less finger pointing that needs to go on and a whole lot more worshiping. Amen. We just love you, Lord. We just love you, Lord. And let's start praying and loving people into Jesus. Amen. Listen, most of the time, listen, let me ask you, do you know when you do something wrong? Yes, you do. Amen. It's, now, listen to me, especially if you've been growing and moving forward in grace the Holy Spirit has a way of getting your attention just like that, amen, really quick. So you really don't need somebody else to point it out to you, do you? Really? Come on now, right? So, you know, I, I know where I am now spiritually and where I once was. And, you know, I used to could do things and I might could get away with it for a day or two. You understand what I'm saying? It might take a day or two before I started feeling like, you know, that, that might not have been the right thing to do. But you know, the closer that you get to the Lord, I'm telling you, now listen, before I open my mouth, 
the Holy Spirit is already warning me. Amen. 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 He's already warning me, hey? Yes. But the problem is, is I usually tell him to mind his own business now. Come on now. <laughs> Don't judge me. You do the same thing. You do the same thing. The Holy Spirit's trying to go. And you're going. Ding, 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 ding. You know, come on now. And then as soon as you finish, you're like, oh, Jesus. I shouldn't have said that. And I go, yeah, the Holy Spirit told you that 30 seconds ago that you shouldn't have said that. And so now, now listen, now what do you get to do? Oh, repentance easy. Apologize. And that's what I hate sometimes. Amen. You got to look them right in the face. Say you're sorry. You know, and, and then someone's like, I need to apologize. Yep. I'll be right back. <laughs> right? Yeah. I'll be right back. Because the last thing you ever want to do is say, you understand what I'm saying? But now listen, if you want to move forward with the Lord and you want to move forward in grace and favor and blessing, you best get good at apologizing. You better learn to swallow your pride, be humble and know and realize that if you're going to make it with Jesus, you got to keep him first. You got to keep him first. And my best advice to you, listen, is you start listening on the front end of a whole lot of conversations. So you quit having to apologize on the tail end of the conversation. Amen. Now that's revelation. Some of y'all need to be writing down. I I'm preaching a little better than y'all letting on this morning. Amen. It says, now listen, meekness, we know that long suffering. We're just going to camp out a minute at long suffering. Amen. Because, listen, I don't know about you, but my idea of long suffering is three minutes or less. That is long suffering. Huh. Right? We are such an impatient people. Our society is geared towards everything quick, fast, and easy, right? You, you, you know, we, we share this all the time. You, you know, we, we, we like to go get fast food or don't like to, but it's a necessary evil in a lot of lines. But, you know, when you pull up to Chick-fil-A and you're 20 cars deep, that ain't happening. I don't know about you, but sometimes I pick fast food by who has the shortest line. Amen. And then get into that line and it's like at the grocery store, you know, you're coming up with your basket full of groceries and you're headed up to the cashier. And what's the first thing you start doing? Honey, you go stand in that line. I'm going to stand in this one. Whichever one starts moving, we'll move over to that, okay? Come on now. You know, now, let me ask you. Did you ever think maybe you ought to get in the longest line? That never crosses my mind, amen? But you know, you get in the longest line and you start in the back and you know, you want to really cause some excitement. Start singing praise and worship. Amen. Amen. Just get in the back of the line and start worshiping the Lord. They'll get out of your way in the name of Jesus. But you know, just, you know, your life is a whole lot like going to the grocery store, amen? Because I don't know what it is, but I can tell you, right, you always pick the line that you think's moving the quickest and the shortest. And as soon as you get into that line, what happens? Never fails, does it? They're scanning their groceries, you know, and then, oh, this one's got a crack in it. Oh, no, that's okay. No, we'll get you a new one. Yeah. Right? Come on now. So, uh, I need a price runner on, on uh, you know what I'm saying? That's you're like, ah, oh, Jesus. 
right? You know, that's just like life. You're moving along. You're trying to get through your day, and all of a sudden things are happening, right? And then just like at the grocery store, what do you start doing? You can feel that tension start to rise, right? You can feel that just kind of building. And then, what, and then they, they start kind of talking and conversing to each other, right? You know, they happen to know each other, and you're standing back there thinking, Shut up. <laughs> I'm just being honest, okay? Just do your job, okay? <laughs> then they, they get all the way through to the end, and, and what does that, that, you know, that, that nice person that's in front of you do, but whip out her purse that, you know, it's the size of a feed bag, amen? <laughs> My wife carries one of those, you know. I'm like, honey, can you get me a breath mint, you know, out of your purse? Thank you, honey. Come on now. Listen, the other day, the other day in our truck, the car alarm went off on the truck, okay? The keys are in that feed bag of a purse of hers. We're standing by the truck. Honk, honk, honk. The battery went dead before she could get her keys out. We had to call AAA, come give us a jump start, hey man. Got him! <laughs> All right, so just like life, you're moving along, listening. That lady in the grocery line up in front of you, she got that feed bag, plops it on the counter, and what does she pull out of that feed bag? Coupons. Coupons. And, 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 and then lately, how many of you know what Instacart is? Have you ever got behind somebody doing Instacart? They're shopping for somebody else, and they've got the coupons. And then they got, well, this one needs to go with this one, and this one needs to go. Listen, you need to get in the back of the line. <laughs> exactly. If we're not careful, listen to me. If we're not careful, life will treat you that way. Every day of your life is your opportunity to grow in grace or to grow in resentment. Every day is your opportunity to move forward knowing that God loves you and that you love people. Or are you going to let the person with the more coupons ruin your day? Amen. 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 You, you know, we get so worried because realistically, is five minutes really going to change your life? No. There are occasions once in a while, but, but as a rule, five minutes is really not going to be the difference between life and death for you. Amen. Amen. But I can't tell you how many times I've, and, I, and I've done once or twice or really come close to, I'll just say, listen, let me buy your groceries for you. <laughs> let me just buy them. That way you can, <laughs> amen. <laughs> you got $60 worth of groceries and you're trying to find 50 cents worth of coupons, okay? I got you. Let me just spot you. <laughs> long suffering amen long suffering we all need to learn and develop some patience amen learn to realize and understand listen life is short it goes by quick let's not let one little instance just ruin your day 
Let's not get all caught up in the circumstance that we're facing and lose sight of the promise and the glory that God has for us. Amen. We need to get to a mindset that we've developed and learned that every opportunity has got the opportunity for us to grow in grace and to grow in patience and to minister the gospel. How about the next time that you're standing in line, you just stand there with a smile and you just tell people, hey, have a nice day. Bless you. How you doing today? <laughs> Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. I mean, have you ever just started a conversation with someone? Just say, hey, have a great day. Jesus loves you. Be blessed. Amen. Yeah. Have you ever felt the Lord tugging on your heartstrings a little bit with somebody? Yeah. Now, now, come on now. Now, let me ask you, those of you who are really brave, have you ever witnessed to somebody in line while you're standing there waiting? And then, you, you know, those of you who are, are really moving up in the class, have you ever asked someone, hey, is there something I could pray with you about? You know, I've asked people several times in different locations throughout my life, hey, could, could, I, I, could I pray with you? I just feel the Holy Spirit. And to this day, not one person has ever told me no. Not one. And more times than not, they bur burst into tears. They share something with me. Amen. And I realize and understand that through the leading of the Lord, you made somebody's day better. But see, if you back that up, I could have stood there impatient. I could have, you understand what I'm saying? But see, we need a little bit more long suffering to learn a little bit more patience so we can minister at every opportunity God blesses you with. You know, there are times God's blessing you with an opportunity that you're not seeing because you're so caught up in you. Amen. All right. We're preaching this morning now. Amen. All right. It says now, listen, long suffering. It says bearing with one another and forgiving one another. Forgiving one another. You know, it's, it, it's simply amazing to me how many times the Bible has to tell us that we need to forgive one another. We need to forgive one another. And, and, and the interesting thing is, you know, the, the word is written for the sinner, but it's written for the saint. Amen. Amen. So he's, he's speaking to the church. He's telling the church we need to forgive one another. Amen. You would think that would just be a given. But no, it's not. You, you know, we all know somebody who in church love the Lord, serve the Lord, but they, they'll sit over on this side when somebody else sits over on that side over there and they won't talk to them or look at, you understand what I'm saying? They go and do the same church. There's all kinds of bitterness. And now praise the Lord, we're not talking about our church this morning. We're not talking about our church. You, you know, but you know, there's one right around the corner, amen? And those people, Jesus, Jesus. <laughs> Easy now. <laughs> but listen, we need to learn to forgive one another. Yes. You know, I, I, I tell you guys all the time, listen, if you want to get offended, you need to come to church. Yes. That's the best place to get offended, okay? Amen. Amen. So, but listen, when you get offended, what do you do with the offense? Let it go. And then how about this? Listen, if you now, now this is going to be harsh. OK, if you really love the Lord and if you're really seeking him, it should be almost impossible to offend you. Amen. It should be almost impossible to offend you. Do you realize, listen, the Holy Spirit will offend your mind in order to arrest your heart. The Holy Spirit will offend your mind in order to arrest your heart. You see, it's through offense that we learn to grow. Amen. Offense is a good thing if it helps you grow. But not because, listen, if you don't deal with the offense, you're going to grow stagnant in your walk, in your relationship. You're going to hit a spiritual ceiling and plateau that you can't get past until you learn to forgive. Amen. 
Now, I'm not preaching on forgiveness this morning, but I'm going to give you a really good piece of advice. You need to get into the presence of the Holy Spirit in the presence of the Father and ask Him, is there anybody in my life who I have not forgiven? Because a lot of us have some baggage. A lot of us have some people in our history. A lot of us have some challenges that we think we moved past, but we haven't. But we want to make sure that, listen, that we've forgiven, that we're moving on because the Bible told me to do it. Amen. It's written in his word over and over again. You need to forgive. Listen, Jesus forgave you of much. He's forgiven you of every wrong thing that you've ever done. He's moved you out of the sinful life that you once lived into a life of abundance and grace in his name. And yet you're harboring some sort of ill feeling and ill manner over somebody that that's done something to you, how about letting it go like Jesus does? And then watch what Jesus will do. If you'll let him, he'll take that offense. He'll take, now listen, he'll take all of that hurt, all of that anguish. He will take all of that. He'll put it underneath his blood. He'll wash your heart clean of all of that. He'll give you a new pep in your step. Amen. Come on now. He'll make every day a good day in Jesus' name. If you'll learn to let go, let go. And walk in love and forgiveness. Amen. Amen. Says we need to forgive one another. And listen, it does not qualify it. Amen. I, I, I talk to a lot of people and they'll say, well, well pastor, you know, I've, I've forgiven them. I've forgiven them. But. Come on now. If you've forgiven somebody, there is no but. Amen. I've forgiven them, but. You know, or, well, well Pastor, if, if uh, I'm ready to forgive them when they're ready to apologize to me. Did you guys read that in there? I didn't read that. You, you, let's look at it again because I want to make sure I didn't miss it. Okay. It just says right here, it says, come on, bearing with one another and forgiving one another. It doesn't say you, you can wait until they say that they're sorry. They ask for your forgiveness. They grovel at your feet. They buy you a new car. They bring dinner over for you, buy you new. I don't see that anywhere in there. Do you? I don't, it just says forgiving one another. Even if anyone has a complaint against another, even as Christ forgave you, so you also should do. Maybe try your best. Is that what your Bible says? My Bible says must do. Must do. He said you must forgive. So you say, well, well Pastor, I, I don't want to. I don't care. Amen? He, he didn't ask you if you wanted. Did you guys see that anywhere in there? And, and he, he didn't ask you. Now, listen to me. He didn't ask you how bad was what they did to you. He didn't ask that. What did he say? He said, you must forgive. Yes. Now, trust me when I tell you, there's some pretty heinous things people have done. Yes. There's some pretty heinous things people have done. Right. There's some pretty serious challenges that some people have had to go through because of another person in their life. That's right. But my Bible says that I must forgive them. Does that make it easy? No. no. But let me tell you, with God, he makes it possible. Yes. But see, you have to surrender the hurt to him. You have to surrender the emotion to him. You have to seek him first. And in seeking him first, he will help position you to a, a, a place in your heart where forgiving them will no longer be a challenge. Where, you understand what I'm saying? Until you draw close enough to him. That forgiveness is a byproduct of being close to him. You're going to try to get to him dragging along unforgiveness. Amen. You got to cut loose the anchor and get a hold of Jesus. 
Get a hold of Jesus and he'll help you. Amen. Because listen, in the natural, there are things people have done in the natural. Trust me, they do not deserve your forgiveness. They don't deserve to be forgiven. Amen. But nowhere does the word say only for those that deserve it. Because listen to me, forgiveness is not about them. It's about you. It's not about what they did. It's about what you're going to do. It's not about whether they were right or wrong. It's whether or not you want to be right or wrong. It's not about whether they're going to heaven or hell. It's about whether you want to go. You understand what I'm saying? It's about you. So make it about you and not about them. Get close to the Lord and he'll help you work your way through forgiving through the hardest of circumstance you've ever faced in your life. Amen. Amen. Now I get to go twice as long this morning because we're not preaching tonight. Amen. So you, you guys get it all this morning. Amen. All right. But it says, but above all these things put on love, which is the bond of perfection. Amen. And then now listen, 15, and let the peace of God rule in your hearts to which you are also called in one body now and be thankful. <laughs> Do you realize when you figure out what the therefore is there for and you read through all the things that applies, you get down to where it gets really good. It gets really good. It said, if you let love rule, it creates that bond of perfection. Amen. You know, none of us are perfect. Only Jesus was sinless and perfect. The rest of us fall miserably short. Amen. But if we learn to walk in love, we get closer every day. Amen. Learning to move forward with God's grace, God's love, and God's forgiveness. And in doing that, it talks about the peace that will rule in your heart. I don't know about you, but above everything else, if you can stay and I can remain at peace in the midst of every circumstance that I'm facing, knowing that there's always always hope for tomorrow. There's always a better day coming, knowing that Jesus is going to bring me through, knowing that I've served and I've worshiped him. I've read about the therefore, and I'm doing my best to live up to what the therefore has to say. So now I can claim and proclaim the peace of God that rules in my heart and reigns over my life so I can weather every storm. I can live through every disappointment. I can learn to forgive when it's not natural to forgive. I can you understand what I'm saying. I can say and face every giant that comes my way, knowing that I serve the giant slayer, amen. Knowing that, listen, the things that I'm afraid of are, are afraid of my God, amen. And knowing that I know that I know that I know his grace is sufficient. His grace is sufficient. His mercy is perfect. His kindness rules and reigns in my heart, knowing that if I learn to live up to the therefore, I can claim the peace that you can't explain. Amen. And I can weather and move through knowing. Listen, you got to know that you know that you know. It's got to be so deep in your knower that it can't help but just come out. Amen. There needs to be joy pushed down so deep in his presence. My Bible says, listen, good measure, pressed down and shaken together. It's going to run over. Amen. You guys aren't just getting as excited as I am. Amen. Now jump down to 17 and we're going to close with this one. And I only got 10 more closings and then we'll close. Amen. In verse 17, it says, and whatever you do. Uh-oh. 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 It says, whatever you do in word or deed. What does that mean? Whatever you do. That means whatever you do. Amen. That means whether you're cleaning toilets at the church. Come on now. Whether you're, you're, you're picking up around the house, whether you're at work earning a paycheck, whether you're sitting in the car riding with your spouse and your kids. Come on now, amen. It says, whatever you do, 
Whatever you do. Isn't it amazing? Riding in the car on your way to church Sunday morning. You and your wife. Speak the word, amen. Oh, the woman that you love, the man that you love, looking over him all smiley and giddy. <laughs> right? Come on now. We're all excited. We're headed to church. Honey, we headed to worship the Lord. Amen. About halfway there. Did you remember to take out the trash? The car needs, you understand what I'm saying? Next thing you know, yeah, you guys are in a little bit of a, <laughs> amen. He said, she said, we said, praise the Lord. You get to church. <laughs> bam. Walking in. As soon as you see some, good morning, praise the Lord. <laughs> yeah. Oh, isn't God good this morning? Amen. Turn around, look at your wife. <laughs> Jesus loves you this morning. Amen. I tell you, you know the best way to solve that? Drive different cars to church. That's revelation, amen. <laughs> My Bible says, listen, that whatever you do, whatever you do in word or deed, you do it as unto the Lord. Amen. If you'll learn to practice that, I promise you, it'll bring revelation into your life. It'll bring change into your life if you learn to realize and understand. Listen, whatever I do, whatever you do, we do for the honor and the glory of the Lord. It doesn't matter what the task is. What matters is the attitude behind it. And those of you that have worked and done things that you don't enjoy or do enjoy, you know that attitude makes all the difference. All the difference. Amen. Once your attitude gets bad, you've begrudged having to do. It seems it takes forever. You put it off and you put it off. You know, we all have that one job or that one thing at work that we just don't like to do. And so you put it off and 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 you put it off until you can't put it off no more. And then you tried to get two other people to do it. They wouldn't do it either because they don't like it. You understand what I'm saying? And then when finally you just can't wait no more and you go do it and when you're all done with it, what do you normally think? That really wasn't that bad. It wasn't near as bad as I let it up in my mind to be. Amen. Do you realize that's your life? Amen. Your life is not that bad. It's not that bad. We just need to learn to do some of the things that we don't like to do. Amen. Some of the things that we keep putting off. Learn to change. Read through the therefore. Start practicing what the therefore. Understand that everything that you do, everything that I do, I do for the Lord. Amen. Amen. With a good attitude. With a good attitude. And watch the difference that Jesus makes. Watch the difference. Amen. Amen. God's a good God. Yes, and is. trust me, he just wants what's best for you. Amen. I'm telling you, stop fighting him and start worshiping. Amen. 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 Give the Lord a big hand. <laughs>